Sandeep Sharma did this recently, and the ball was so good that the umpire might have missed that it didn't bowl Rohit Sharma. Only a few bowlers in the world can land a knuckleball on demand every time. The grip is really hard. Many bowlers never work it out. Others can bowl it, but not land it consistently. And some can bowl it, but they can't hide it. So to take this ball and then add a degree of difficulty of bowling a leg cutter with it is just insanity. And then he landed it so perfectly that it hit the top of off stump, or at least created an illusion like it did. This is not a normal cricket act. And yet, it was from a bowler who was not taken at the last IPL auction. I mean, no one wanted this bowler? What the hell is going on with that? What the hell is going on with that? And let us look at some Sandeep Sharma facts for a moment. He has the 14th most wickets ever in the IPL and also the 10th most of any Indian. Even as a part-time trundler and bowling coach, it would probably be worth to have him in your squad. Wickets on their own are only so important. What about the wickets at the top, which is where Sandeep cooks? Well, he cooks and eats here, in fact. He's at number two on the all-time power play list, one of very few players with more than 50 wickets in the top six overs. He is a no doubt great power play bowler. In fact, even if you just factor in his economy, he's definitely one of the best power play bowlers in history. There is no way to look at these raw numbers and think otherwise. But he does bowl some of the best power play overs, you know, up front when the ball is swinging. So I thought it was only fair to look at him when it comes to true economy and true wickets per 24 balls. And when you do that, he's still really good. In fact, he might be even better. He takes wickets at an above average rate, and he does that while going at over half and over better than par. He is the real deal. He has production, numbers, averages, econ, advanced metrics. He is one of the best to ever take the new ball in the IPL. You're talking about one of the only bowlers who took 12 wickets per game in every season from 2014 to 2020. He was a machine in those years. So he had reliability, but he also has some of the best batters in the world in his pocket. Shubman Gill scores at less than four runs and over against him. That's very low. Rohit Sharma averages 7.6 against him. Chris Gale was barely at a run of ball and only averaging 16. Sky averages 10 against him. And this is all bearing the lead because he has Virat Kohli seven times at an average of 11. Yeah, there is absolutely no doubt this is one of the best bowlers in the IPL. He's got a game that can slow you down or dismiss the best around. Like, for instance, there are some bowlers that Virat Kohli slows down against. But what is he absolutely best at? Scoring more runs than anyone else. And that's because he stays in so long. Well, not when Sandeep's bowling to him. So where does he rate amongst the best IPL seamers from India? Because I think this is important. There haven't been that many hugely successful local quicks. Even some of their high-quality test players haven't been as good when it comes to IPL numbers. And clearly, you could see two bowlers here just like no one else. Boomer is 1.3 runs and over better than a normal bowler by true economy, which is obscene. And you can see Booby is just behind him at 0.9 runs and over. And you can see why they're both so economical. It's because people aren't even trying to play shots off them, which means they're also not losing their wickets as much. Teams have basically shut up shop against these two guys. This hasn't happened with Sandeep. He's certainly still getting wickets. But you can see that he's still a very good bowler when it comes to true economy. In fact, he's the fourth best on this list, just behind Zahir Khan. In terms of true wickets per 24 balls, he is the third best striker with only Ashish Nira and Harshal Patel beating him. So based on all this, you could easily make a claim for him to be the, what, third best Indian seamer in the IPL ever, or at the worst, top five? If you wanted to be really unfair, you would call him the discount Bhuvi Kumar. Obviously, he's not quite at that level. And there actually are some differences when you look at their record. He bowls less than an over on average at the death. But overall, he's certainly a fairly similar bowler. They both like the new ball. They bowl together a lot as well. But if you look at their career earnings, even in Sandeep's glory years, he was massively down on what Boovie was making. And I don't think he should have been paid as much. But he was certainly underpaid in that period. But there's no doubt he was never on Boovie's level. But this also got me thinking, wouldn't that make him a good buy for this season? His value is down of late, and you still have his experience and skill. In fact, for a fast bowler, he's a really good fielder as well. This is not a normal grab. So what you have is a way above average talent as a bowler who can certainly catch the ball. And coming into this season, I was planning on doing a feature on what a brilliant career he's had so far. Then he wasn't picked at the auction at all. And so now I'm only left with the main question of this piece. Why? Let's start with form, because that is the major reason. Up until 2021, he never had a bad year of T20 bowling in the IPL. 
Not all of them had been great, but he took a reasonable amount of wickets most years and was also very economical in most of them. Then 2021 happens, and he was, well, roadkill. He couldn't take a wicket, and he had the second worst economy he's ever had since he was a young pup coming into the IPL. Then he struggles to get wickets in the following year, 2022. Weirdly, his economy here is fine. This suggests to me that it might just be a little bit of luck in that particular year. But he did bowl over 20 overs, so the sample size is not too bad. Either way, his econ is actually really good. There is no doubt looking at those numbers, it should be good enough for a mid-level contract in 2023. And instead, he was completely unsold. And obviously, in the IPL auctions, there's lots of vagaries around and all sorts of things. These things happen, but not to players of this quality. And when I see this, my first thought is age. Because he has been around for a long time, so I guessed he was 32. He's actually only 29, although in a few more days, he'll be 30. And that's certainly not young for a seamer. But for one who relies on skill the way he does, it is certainly not an age that would usually start to dump someone like this. Like if he was 32 or 33 now, then in the 2021 season, he would have already been into his 30s when he started to decline, which is a normal time for some bowlers to show signs that they might be done. But Sandeep Sharma turned 28 during the 2021 season. That is not a normal time for your age to play a part. It just doesn't make sense. But something else was happening at this time. The Sunrisers Hyderabad were collapsing as a franchise. Remember, this was the year that they sacked David Warner as captain because he kept running himself out and batting a little bit slowly for a few games. They were a complete shambles. And the madness of their team also affected the man who had been a rock for them for a bunch of seasons. For instance, they decided in one game not to use him up front in the power play. Trevor Bayless talked about how Khalil Ahmed was better for that matchup. And that's actually what I thought might have been the problem here, that they had three new ball bowlers. But when I looked into it, meaning that perhaps he was getting less of the new ball, and there is an element of that there. However, the real noticeable thing about his record is that he wasn't bowling as much in the end. That would certainly account for why he didn't take as many wickets in 2022, when that trend also continued. But it doesn't actually explain why his economy was high in 2021. That would certainly account for why he didn't take as many wickets in 2021, and the same thing happened again in 2022. But it doesn't really explain why his economy was so high in 2021. I couldn't find any major injuries either. So he just clearly had two bad years. But he was with the Sunrisers during their disaster season. And in 2022, he was back at Punjab, which was a bit of an experimental year for them. But overall, his numbers were fine. There is an element here of the one-dimensional nature of his bowling. He might have great numbers, but a lot of that is working in great bowling attacks where his skills were being maximized. Basically, what I'm saying is he needs to bowl a lot in the power play. That was harder to do as the Sunrisers were combusting and things weren't set up for him when he got back to Punjab. But I think the main problem with him as a bowler is his incredible unsexiness. And I don't mean physically, he's a fine looking man. He's pretty comfortably medium fast and he's very short. If there is a seaman that India is known to create a lot of, it is the undersized, not too quick, skillful bowler. Exactly what he is. I think a lot of teams just thought that they would be able to find another bowler like him out there. And in principle, I agree. But looking at the history of the IPL, it would be hard to suggest that there have been many bowlers like him ever. And even in half form, he should have been hired. Of course, he has gone on to play this year and he's had a bit of a mixed bag, holding MS Dhoni down at the death in one game and then losing another match with a no ball for his last delivery or his second last delivery. But it's also worth talking about why he's playing this year. After going unsold at the auction, he was chosen later when Rajasthan Royals had an injury. The player he was replacing was Prasid Krishna, the man who just got a very big payday, despite not having a long or storied career behind it. In fact, Prashid has already made more money than Sandeep in his career so far. This despite their records being not even in any way comparable. Sandeep has been a consistent top performer and Prashid was hidden from the power play up until what, last year? And the funny thing is that I kind of assume because of how little he has played that it's because Prashid was young. But actually, Prashid Krishna is 27. However, he's 27 and tall and fast. And that's not quite a unicorn in Indian cricket, but it's certainly sex on wheels compared to Sandeep's, I don't know, beige secondhand t-shirt. And I think that is the main difference. When you break it down, Sandeep might have an incredible record, but there is always someone out there who just looks a little bit sexier than his plodding bowling. Although that said, there just aren't many bowlers in the entire world that can bowl a ball like this, even in their wildest fantasies. <laughs>